Representative George Santos has been expelled from the House of Representatives. He is the first House lawmaker to be expelled in more than 20 years. Um, and you will, of course, expect the vote was strongly bipartisan. It was 311 to 114. Uh, and, you know, I mean, there were some Republicans who obviously voted against it. But this is why we can't have nice things, um, because you have uh, Bob Menendez currently in Congress. They're finding gold bars from like <laughs> Egyptian princes or whatever the hell. And everyone's like, nope, it's totally fine. He can stay. He can stay. Oh, he's under investigation. He can stay. It's fine. You have uh, Nancy Pelosi making insider trading deals, getting rich off of being in Congress. She can stay. She's fine. You have, all, you have Adam Schiff who lied to the American people for four years and claimed that his security clearances gave him access to for sure evidence that Donald Trump was involved in Russian collusion. That didn't end up being true. He lied to America about a very important thing for four years freaking years. Did it, did he get expelled? No. Do you know why? Because we have a ballless Republican party who thinks that if they outmoral the other side, that somehow this time we're going to win. Instead of being like the Democrats who go, when we have power, we're going to take it and we're going to jam it down your throats. Why? Because we have the power to do so. And by the way, we're always going to be united when we do it. Instead, Republicans are like, oh, but we have to be the good guys. We have to call out those rotten apples on our our side of the fence. Why? Oh, and by the way, uh, George Santos, the, the investigation that was done into him was very minimal. They hadn't even completed it and gone through all of the channels that they would need to go through. Look, if he's a scumbag, let the process play out and then take care of it. But to do this preemptively as if outmoraling the other side is going to do anything other than give us a slimmer majority. And um, by the way, when Democrats get that power back, they will wield it as they always do so effectively is so fucking Maddening. <laughs> Swear jar. God, I saw this. I was like, this is unbelievable. Of course, of course, Republicans would do. Of course, of course, we cannot get out of our own way. The other side doesn't have any rules to play by, but we always will. Don't worry. Don't you worry about that. This is the whole point of the Republican Party. They're not there to actually represent their no. parties. They're there to go along and get along. We, have a, we actually have a clip that I tweeted out from The Blaze going viral right now. But it's of Senator John Fetterman saying, if we're going to expel Santos, Menendez has done far worse things than yes. Santos. So right now, the brain dead ogre senator from Pennsylvania, who's a Democrat, <laughs> is smarter than a lot than 105 of these Republicans in the House. Yep. which should tell you a lot. I yep. mean, that they can't muster the same uh, courage or ideas that you know, a literal zombie can. Um, <laughs> it's pretty sad. And the Republicans, again, this is just, this just goes back. The Democrats always present a united front. They yes. never police their own. They always welcome them into the fold. Republicans are the opposite. They do this moralizing where mm -hmm. they feel like they have to uh, constantly appeal to their enemies to gain some sort of favor from them. And yeah. it's just not going to happen. No, they will. They never will. And you know what? Um, at the end of the day, they're still going to call you corrupt. They're still going to call Trump, uh, you know, a criminal. They're still they're, they're still going to call you a racist. They're still going to call you a homophobe. They're still going to call you a trans. They're still going to call you all the things. They still think you're a piece of garbage and you're not going to, like, convince them otherwise because you're like, no, we got to get the bad guys out. Look, I've made this point about the Republican Party for as long as I can remember. Um, these guys suck. They do. Uh, and they are strategically, they're morons, right? Yeah. It's the whole, you again, another analogy we talk about with, with the whole Christianity bit. It's funny. Left atheists, especially leftist atheists, have no problem when you, they feel like you're doing something out of order to try to appeal to you. They'll say, well, that's something Jesus wouldn't do or some sort of weird <laughs> combination of that. Even though this is something that they will, they'll mock Jesus 20 minutes after they, they, they said that because they expect you to play by that set, those set of rules and they will hold you against it. But mm -hmm. that's not a set of standards exactly. that they themselves exactly. abide by. Exactly. Um, and unfortunately, you have folks on our side because, yeah, maybe we are the more rational people. And I get it. We're the more rational people. People that value liberty are more rational than the irrational, uh, hedonistic, libertine uh, uh, leftists. I, I totally understand that. But 
they themselves, you put it perfectly, where they don't even police their own. Like no. they they have these cats act out, and they ain't gonna do they ain't gonna do absolutely nothing because they look they look they're playing the long game is what it is. Jamal they're, Bowman. Yeah, they're they're, they're Shoot certain. To leave. Yeah, like these people are calling for like geno- like near yes. genocidal rhetoric yep. against. Yeah. America. Right. They hate. I mean, they openly say they hate America. They think we're an evil. We're an evil country. They think our founders were evil. They hate everything about us. And yet, the Democrats are never going no. to hold their own accountable. No. And then the GOP. They always promise every election. They say we're going to get in there. If you give us power, we're going to hold them accountable. We understand your frustrations. They don't understand your frustrations. They no. never hold these people accountable. They always give them more money. They mm-hmm. are in lockstep with their agenda, even though they know that the Democrats would never come to our side mm-hmm. on any issue, any of our priorities. So it, it should it's a very revealing moment. It should tell you a lot about how uh, how DC operates. Yeah, I, t- I and I mean to Logan's point earlier, you said at the beginning, um, treat this as a war. Yes. This is the same this is the same thing. You treat this as a war. You don't cede an inch, not one single inch. And again, I'm not trying to endorse having criminals on our side do criminal things. If the process would have played out and he had been convicted of all of these things that he is being accused of, then let's have that conversation then. That's not what happened. That's not what happened. And you would think that a party who sees how uh, the Democrats are weaponizing the justice system against, oh, I don't know, the front runner of the freaking presidential race, that you would think that these other Republicans would go, yeah, we can't do that. Yeah, and if there's not a single standard of justice, then you have to say, well, maybe we should have some criminals on our side doing right, criminal things. Right, exactly. What they're doing to Trump is clearly just BS charges. Right. It's fake. It's not, it doesn't have any semblance toward criminal justice. Um, and, and this is where you have to uh, understand, like, all of the stuff that's going on in Congress, all of these people engage in petty corruption all the time. Mm-hmm. So I think what DeSantis, uh, not DeSantis, what Santos, sorry, those are very similar. <laughs> Uh, I think even though DeSantis is a lot better than Santos, but <laughs> I think what Santos did is he kind of made a mockery of the institution and they did not like that one bit. So yeah. I think they kicked him out because he, not because he did some like some egregious crime, but because he sort of made a mockery of our sacred democracy. Our sacred democracy. <laughs> well, I'm I'm all, anything that mocks the, the, the Congress, I'm all for yes. that because they deserve it. They're a band full of criminals. The difference is I don't pretend that they're not that other people do. Look, uh, this whole charade or whatever it is that you want to call it, everything moves in America has moved closer and closer to like absolute like leftism. That's just what that's to been the trajectory, no matter who has been in in in, mm-hmm. in part in like a majority or a president Power, even for yeah. that matter. Seventy five years. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been there. <laughs> incrementally. It's moved the opposite way, and it's because on any given issue, especially, it's like, hey, we negotiate with them. We bring a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we see a little bit of ground. This is what happened with the quote unquote gun rights over the country uh, over the last uh, half century. It's that it's a little bit. It's a little bit. It's a little bit to the point to where we're at right now and never is it like abolition really going the opposite way where we're trying to get freedoms uh, or let's say have people stop impeding on other individuals freedoms more often this is why you shouldn't even to me negotiate with them if it's just down to government who cares i don't care about any of that stuff like why on earth if your position is correct if it's the just position if it's the moral position why does it always have to be under some sort of negotiation this is why i grilled uh, Tr- trump even on, on the whole bump stock ban a lot of these conservatives using that term loosely, were bitching at me uh, when I was screaming on this show. Like, it was one of the worst things that he had, he, he had done. Uh, not necessarily because of I use a bump stock. and That has nothing to do with it. It's more, if you read the language, uh, it, it's like, it's setting us, uh, like, Democrats up for success mm-hmm. to, for the same reason, refer to these uh, old, like, National Federal Firearms Act and all that such. If they can deem, basically, anything it is that you have in terms of an attachment as a machine gun, they can make it illegal. Why on earth would we do that? But they said, well, we got to get the leftists to shut up. Well, here we are a few, few years removed uh, from that. Have they stopped trying to take people's guns now? No. Uh, maybe no. we shouldn't see it any ground. Yeah. And that's a very important point of, of the political ratchet. Uh, it's this long march of progress. Everything always shifts leftward. Mm-hmm. It never comes back rightward. Mm-hmm. And that's what the Republicans are there to do. It's to put a little bit of, uh, make it seem like we're winning when we're actually just moving a little bit leftward and not as far leftward as right. the Democrats. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, by the way, um, do you remember when they uh, repealed Obamacare? 
Oh, no. Oh, um, <laughs> then nobody's even running yeah, on that, that anymore. That, that's because they didn't. <laughs> if you like that clip, there is plenty more where that came from. Click the link in the description below to subscribe to the News and Why It Matters YouTube channel to watch the full episode.